Good evening, everyone. Oh my goodness, it's so good to see everyone here. We are happy that you made it. We know it's been a tough week. So many things have happened this week and just trying to get home from work, that by itself is a challenge. So we're glad that you were able to join us. And for those who join us later on, we're glad that you tuned in to us and you have been so supportive. So let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us throughout this week. Thank you for keeping us together. Thank you for keeping us on our jobs, to keeping our minds stayed on you. And Father, we're here to praise you and share your name. And we ask a special blessing on everyone who's listening, those who will come in later and on the panel as we divide your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we, again, we're welcoming everybody in, um, joining us. Today, we have a special guest with us today with our Dr. Marcia Davis. And so we're so happy to have her. But we will go ahead and start with the health status. We don't have too many announcements, but I would, of course, like to remind everyone that the Pathfinders are still collecting money uh, to go on their trip come this is it, is it this summer? Um, boy, I have to really actually get that clarified. So, but they're still collecting money for that. So we encourage you guys to always give and help our Pathfinders out. So let us welcome Fada here. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you and to see you all. I'm going to read the health studies for you so we can pray for uh, the families are uh, listed in here. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Lori Preston Eaton, Sister Joel Cable's health and her family, Deacon Greg Smith, who needs a kidney transplant, and his brother Herbert Smith, Sister Mary Elisa Semkins, Deacon Anthony Reynolds, Sister Lilia Neal, and Brother Anthony Neal, and Brother Jean Pierre Thomas. Keep praying for Sister Camelia Hawkins, Sister Cassandra Miller, her father, Charles Miller, Sister Bonita Harrington Cummings, Sister Betty Adra Abrams, Stephanie Stevens, Sister Yvonne Wren, Philip Grayson, Lauren Chavez, Sister Van Bryant's daughter, Danielle Bryant, still need our prayers. Sister Tony Eccles said, the parents are doing fine this week. They are getting out and walking. Plus, Carl is still having eye appointments. Thank you for your continued prayers, calls, and visits. Keep those fervent prayers going on for Brother Fred Bryant. His situation requires divine intervention. Uh, last Sabbath, we announced the passing of our dear brother Enrique de Velez. Continue to show his wife Melody and his family and loved ones the love and support that they need during this time of loss. A celebration of his life will be on April 28th, uh, 2024 at 2 p.m. at Kansas. April 28th at 2 p.m. at Kansas. We're still praying for restoration of health for Dr. Winston Richards, Wayne Dolly II, for Sharon, who is fighting cancer, and for Mr. Mario at the VA hospital at Loma Linda. Uh, remember the service for Sister Lucille Vaughn, the mother of Sister Stephanie Vaughn, will be tomorrow, April, 20, April 18, 2024, at 11 a.m. at the Thompson Walls Chapel in Mortuary. The address is 3601 5th Avenue, in Sacramento, California, 95817. So 3601 Fifth Avenue, Sacramento, California, 95817. Let's continue to pray that God will provide the peace and comfort that only he can give to Stephanie and her family. Let's keep praying for Sister Jane, Maneo's mom, who is at home recuperating for her from her last hospitalization. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We pray that God will once again bring her through the serious health challenges she is still facing. Yeah, God did it before. We believe he can do it again. 
Don't forget to pray for the three unspoken prayer requests on our list. The service for longtime former Kansas Avenue member, Brother Julius Madkin, was held on April 3rd at 11.30 a.m. at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Covina, California. Condolences can be sent to his wife, uh, Donis Madkin, at 539 Sonoma Court, Ontario, California, 91762. Let's cover the family in prayer as they mourn this significant loss. We are still praying for the Mohammed and Genzi Magensi families. Please remember Richard Lawrence and his daughter, Yasmin, as they mourn the loss of her mother, Dawn, who died on March 21st from a rare form of cancer. Also, please pray for the challenges ahead as they work to rebuild their relationship. Brenda Alexander says, Larry, Larry's surgery went well on Tuesday. He's stable but weak. Now begins recuperation. Please continue praying for, for us. Also, my brother-in-law, Henry Kennedy, the father of Sylvia Kennedy, passed away on Tuesday afternoon. Please continue to keep our entire family in prayer. Thank you for your faithful prayers and support. We are saddened to announce the passing of Brother James Lee, who used to attend our church. Let's keep his wife, Millie, his family and loved ones in prayer for peace and comfort during this time. He was one of our brother, uh, uh, one, of, one of Brother Bill Howe's best friend. More information will be shared when it becomes available. And if you uh, know those family members, or if you know anyone who is grieving your loss, uh, you can encourage them to attend Grief Share or join them, join with them, or come in for a couple of sessions with them to introduce them, because no one really should grieve alone. Let us leave Brother Gary Willis in prayer. And this is our report for this evening. We're going to invite our sister, Elder Dr. Marcia Davis, to lead us in prayer at this time. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Marcia. Why? Perfect. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. Good evening, church family. It's let's time. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for this privilege to pray. Pray and not faint. God, our eyes are on you. There's so much going on, Lord. It's a lot to make our hearts sad, but our eyes are on you, Father. We ask your blessings upon all of the people mentioned on the sick list, the prayer list, Father. We ask your blessings and your healing mercies. We ask your comfort for those who have suffered loss. We ask that you give us strength to go on, and we know that we have it in you, Jesus. So keep our eyes on you. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and pray. What an awesome privilege to come before your mercy seat, to lay our cares and our burdens down. Please hear from on high. Answer, O oh God, according to your perfect will, and bless us with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you for your power to meet every need. We ask that you bless in all that is said and done during this prayer meeting time. May that which is shared bring insight and encouragement to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, we praise you, and we thank you. Amen.
Wow. What a wonderful song. Yeah. Yeah. I just love it. <laughs> I know. Isn't it a fantastic song? Oh, my oh, goodness. It's the secret place. Yeah. I feel full already. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> right, right. Excellent. The secret place. <laughs> yes. And we have so many people to welcome today. Yes. Um, everybody is live in the chat, you know, just... Um, saying happy power hour to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so we start with uh, Francine here. And she says, good evening, a warm welcome to all those gathered for this power hour. Get ready for a memorable time and a great experience. Amen, amen. And then we have Hattie here, welcome to power hour. And Victoria as well. Judy also, happy Power Hour, Kansas Avenue. Um, let's see, who else do we have? We have Carmen. Carmen. Yes. yes. <laughs> and of course, Dr. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, doctor in the house. And I know. Sean Laurie saying happy Power Hour and Heidi here. And Brother Harris. Yes, my Harris. finder. <laughs> yes. And thank you so much for clarifying for me about uh, the Pathfinders. Yes, they will be going to Gillette, Wyoming on their mm -hmm. camporee mm -hmm. August 5 through 11. So, of mm -hmm. course, they're always looking for funds. They would like to take that trip in comfort and in style. Yes. Instead of walking. So, yes, let's help them out. And of course, Colette here, um, she's saying welcome Power Hour and Gregory Smith as well, um, saying welcome to Happy Power yes. Hour. Mm -hmm. Yay! Oh, and Miss Butler as well, <laughs> Sally Butler. So welcome everyone, so mm -hmm. glad to have you. And we have our special guest, like I said, with uh, Dr. Marcia Davis. Um, and we are going to be looking at Matthew 14. So mm -hmm. Marcia is going to start us off with uh, the text. All right. Turn with me, everyone. We're going to be reading from the King James Version of St. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. Mm -hmm. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water. Yes. To go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Our question that we would love for you to respond to tonight is simply this. Would you get out of the boat? Why or why not? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you so much for that lovely, lovely reading. Oh my goodness. What 
uh, episode so there. Yes. So, yeah. So we can start here by looking at um, the 23rd verse here. Jesus mm -hmm. has, um, he just finished feeding the 5,000, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. before that, John the Baptist had been uh, beheaded. And so they had told Jesus that his cousin had died. Mm -hmm. He was going to be by themselves, but then they were stopped by the crowd. So he ended up stopping to speak to the crowd of 5,000. Mm -hmm. So now he's tired. He needs his time alone with God. And he tells the multitude to go away, time to go home. And that the uh, disciples now, they need to go ahead and meet him on the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. So that brings us here to uh, verse 23, where he sends the multitude away and he has departed then to the mountain to pray. Mm -hmm. And he was there alone, it says. So the thing that we wanted to point out is that God took time for some self-care. He took time to go away by himself and pray with his God to be there. And, it, and he took a lot of time, you know, mm -hmm. evening had come. So by the time he meets the disciples later on, on the sea and the fourth watch, this is many hours has passed. So he has been praying for a long time with God. Mm -hmm. And I could imagine the type of sorrow he was feeling for his cousin dying and the way he died. And it probably would have reminded him of what he was coming up against, you know? And so he goes to the right source for comfort um, to talk about this, you know, and this to remind us that that's also what we should be doing as well. Because we have so many times in our lives with family, with work, with friends, that things can get really overwhelming. So mm -hmm. taking that time intentionally to set it aside and, and pray and talk with your father and just, you know, relax in his presence is really can be very refreshing indeed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always wonder, you know, when we read this text, you know, what was he thinking? Because he told them to go across to the, the lake to the other side. So it seems to me that he planned to walk on water and meet them there. It's <laughs> 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 kind of a slash. It didn't just happen. Um, but the spirit of prophecy, Ellen G. White, she also points out in Desires of Ages that um, he had told them earlier to leave. Mm -hmm. And they had delayed. And so they got caught in the middle of the storm, partly because they had delayed in following his instruction to get in the boat and go mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I thought it was pretty cool that even though he's spending time with God, he's kind of thinking about what's going on with my disciples. Let me go and get them because the storm is getting really bad. What are you guys' thoughts on his, his time alone? But I'm thinking uh, the timing of it, you know, just as to follow up with what you just said, to piggyback on that, you know, just Jesus must have known, you know, that it's time to step out and then rescue them because he already knew it was going to happen. So look at the timing is it, of, of it. So I'm thinking whatever situations we are in, mm -hmm. um, God can res rescue us and he will not be late. No, he will not he won't delay his presence he will not be late if we trust him he'll come just on time for us mm -hmm. just on time yes okay yes. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it also from the standpoint of the fact that Jesus took a long time to pray for him to pray just him and the father and mm -hmm. how it empowered him to to keep on working and many times in the Bible several times Jesus would separate himself pray all night and then be empowered enough to go back in the temple and preach and heal mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. But the disciples are separated from Jesus physically. Mm -hmm. And they're probably not even thinking about prayer or if they are, they probably just, you know, just screaming out, you know, uh, trying to deal with the struggles of the world because mm -hmm. that wind being probably powered by the prince of the power of the air wanted mm -hmm. to make sure he frustrated them. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that uh, in this world, we're gonna have trouble. Trouble, uh, the scriptures say we're troubled on every side, but not distressed, perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down and shipwrecked, but not destroyed. 
that's when we keep our focus on the Lord, because otherwise we'll sink, we'll get mm -hmm. discouraged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without the presence of Christ with them, the disciples encountered trouble. Wow, that's wow. powerful. Exactly, oh my goodness. And then the story then continues. Now they're in the middle of the sea. Jesus has come in to meet them. Um, and so here we are in verse 26. And now the disciples see him coming and they are afraid. It is a spirit they cried out in fear. But straight away, Jesus speaks to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Now that I thought was really quite interesting because they have been with Jesus really for quite some time. And you know, all, all the wives here, you know, and, and husbands too, you know your partner, right? You can tell by the shape of the head, the way they walk, the way they move, you know when your partner is coming. But the disciples, their first thought is a spirit, it's a ghost, what is this thing? And I'm like, how come they didn't recognize Jesus? He just spent so much time. But when Jesus speaks, they know his voice. Mm -hmm. And right away, that, that lowers their fear in knowing their, uh, Jesus, the voice of God, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was interesting, you know. So many times that we, we have been, we can say we've been Christians for a long time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes still, we are very much afraid. Oh, and yeah. you know what fear will do. It will make us make all the wrong choices. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. What are you, you all taught on the fear of the disciples in the boat? Go ahead, Marcia. <laughs> I was just thinking I probably would be scared too, you know, seeing, walking on water. I don't think they had seen him walk on water before. Right. And, and so it's like, only spirits can do that, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I figured that, you know, that that was pretty unnerving. And um, I think, too, that God knew, Jesus knew they were struggling. And I, I, I'm amazed at how he didn't need a map. I mean, it's it's hard enough to find somebody who's lost mm -hmm. when you got a map mm -hmm. and you're on land and you have landmarks. There's no landmarks on the sea. Mm -hmm. And he knew mm -hmm. exactly where his children were. So it's speaking in terms of them understanding his voice, he heard the voice of his children. Yes. yes. He came to them and found them. He says in the scriptures, even if we made our bed in hell, he's there. Cry oh. out. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's powerful. You know? That's powerful. And what I was thinking too, uh, I see the disciples, you know, they were in that storm, right? And then they see a, a spirit, like a ghost, they think it's a ghost coming at them. So what, what, uh, what a scene, you know, what an experience to have. You know, they are, they are fearful already of the storm. Now, it, it seems to be a ghost is coming well, until Jesus spoke. And when he, he spoke, you know, then that calmed their fears. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. And we here, have a comment about Brother Harris was saying they have been with him all that time. They should ah. add more trust in him. Ah, and every word he asked you to do at that moment, I would have got into the book. Okay, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Wow. Hmm. And then I think um who has the next section? Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. So we pick up the story um in verse 20. Well, we'll cover 27. Where he says, then, but Jesus immediately spoke to them, reassuring them, don't be afraid, he said. Uh, then Peter called to him, sir, if it's really you, tell me to come over to you walking in water. So I see in that section the power of faith. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Peter just says, uh, Lord, can I, can, I, can I walk and come to you? Yeah. Uh, so Peter... Imagine if we could only imagine, you know, Jesus walking on on the water, and then he told Peter to just come, you know, uh, come in, yeah, come, you know. And Peter climbed out of the boat and started walking yeah. uh, toward Jesus. So I can see uh, uh, Peter coming from that angle, and Jesus coming on the opposite angle, and then they are going to meet. 
Uh, and then what the beautiful thing in verse, um, uh, it, so Peter went over the side of the boat, that is uh, verse uh, 29, and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he looked around, so here is the word, but, a big word, B-U-T. You know, mm -hmm. whenever we say that word, mm -hmm. then if we, it, um, it, it, it indicates an opposite thing that's going to happen for whatever was going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started walking. If we can imagine that, he's walking on water. Mm -hmm. But he stopped looking at uh, the waves around him. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that changed everything. Yeah. Right there. And then the main three things I see uh, what, that happened at that moment is that he became afraid. And then he started uh, doubting, you know, and then he was filled with unbelief at that time. So when you are in that situation, it's going to result in sinking. You're going to sink in the boat. Mm. So it's like for all of us, you know, do we just sit there and look at our situations, mm. at our circumstances? Do we look at them or are we keeping our eyes on Jesus who knows right. already? You know, so that was, uh, I don't know what you guys think of, about um, what you have the ideas to add to this section. Oh, yes, I, I that those verses, you know, meant a lot to me because when I saw when Peter was sinking, you know, he did not try to save himself. Well, at least the author does not mention that part. Yes. that he was really trying hard to swim. And when he couldn't swim and was starting to drown, then he called yes. on the, the Lord, but he didn't do that. He called That's immediately. Right. Yes. So <laughs> even if he had a doubt, he knew exactly where his salvation was. Then yes. Think about it, you know, get an opinion from anybody. He knew and right yeah. away, he said, Lord, save me. Save and me. I thought, wow, that's who I want to be. I want to, that even if I'm having a rough time, mm -hmm. even if I'm like, oh, is the Lord here or not, that mm -hmm. I will always go straight to him first to him. Yes. before anything else. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, so, I, I, what, what was, I'm sorry, Jeanette, were you, were you bringing up something else? I'm no, sorry. No. Okay. Go ahead. Um, what stood out to me is when Jesus says, oh, you have little faith, and says, why did you doubt? I am really impressed with Peter that he, thank you, Greg Smith. Yes, we need to keep our eyes. That is the key point. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I admire Peter for the little faith that he had. He did mm -hmm. get out of the boat. Yes. One out of 12. Yes. I yeah. of, and I was looking at the comments of our audience and, and those who commented most of said, yeah, they would get out of the boat. And, and, and go to Jesus, which is great. Um, but I think we get stuck on the issue of if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, because mm -hmm. you can move mountains and all of that. I think we stop at the, the point of little faith. Little mm -hmm. faith will get you going. Mm -hmm. But God is in the process of growing the mustard seed faith. A mustard mm -hmm. seed is very tiny, but it becomes a great tree. Yes. And so it's built by troubles mm -hmm. and struggles, and it's strengthened by those experiences that we see in life. So we, um, I think God is working on all of us to, to improve and, and to grow the faith that, that we have. Mm -hmm. So rather than, it's another way of looking at trouble as to some extent there's a benefit in it. Because yes. I think. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. So when I look at the, the next verse, verse 20, 31, mm -hmm. and it says, immediately, watch this, immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and yeah. caught Peter, you yeah. know. Uh, mm -hmm. So imagine Jesus is already walking on water and then Peter is coming toward him. He wasn't mm -hmm. on, ground, on the ground, but he reached out. You yes. know, and pull Peter up and, and place him on top of the water. Can you imagine that? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's amazing. Yes. You know, it's amazing. So a few things I got from that came to mind when I um mm -hmm. when I thought of this section. Um, I found out that Peter experienced something that the others did not because mm -hmm. he stepped out of water. 
It's in, mm -hmm. the, the others did not experience that. And not only did Peter do something that the other di disciples didn't do, but only Peter and Christ have ever walked on water in the history of humanity. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Oh, nice, Isn't nice. that amazing? Mm -hmm. Only yes. Peter, because he had mm -hmm. faith enough to trust the Lord when, he called, called, when Jesus says, come, then he walked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I found also that uh, Peter was asking for something that none of the others asked for. He wanted to have an extraordinary experience yeah. with Jesus. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes we just ask for food and bread and clothes and, and housing and whatever, mm -hmm. the ordinary. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Peter wanted more. Mm -hmm. Peter wanted more than that. He wanted to have something extraordinary with Jesus. And, and the other thing uh, that caught my attention also, uh, Peter did not uh, limit the Lord for only asking for what, was humanly possible mm -hmm. because he yeah. has never seen one somebody else walking on water but he's walking on water now but mm -hmm. he believes that all things are possible to those who believe yeah mm -hmm. so if we believe if we believe god's work or what, what god says about us mm -hmm. then we will see his glory we will see marvelous things yeah yeah, oh, yeah. what do you guys think anything to add to that section Yes, it's absolutely true. I totally agree, you know, and Peter knew he had complete faith in Jesus because he mm -hmm. says, if you command me to come, yes. then yes. this is completely possible. Yes. And I think the amount of faith it takes to do that first step, to even think about it, to, to make that action, to put that foot yes. outside of the boat where you yes. know for sure you're safe in the boat. I mean, it's a storm, but you know your chances are better in the boat. So to be willing to take that first step out, not yes. knowing at all what was going to happen. Exactly. Oh my goodness. I think Peter is not a quitter. He has a lot of fire in him. Very oh, yes. impulsive. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very impulsive. But the other thing that also struck me was that Jesus, he could have just saved Peter. He could have just levitated him. Mm -hmm. and save him just like that but he reached out his hand and did that human connection mm. hey i've got you man i've, mm. I've got you mm. yeah. you know mm -hmm. and they have yes. studies that have proven have you ever seen um a basketball game and when the uh the shooter needs to do a free throw mm -hmm. and he does that if he misses and sometimes whether or not he misses the teammates come and they give him a pat and mm -hmm. they go back to their spots and he does the second uh, throw. Mm -hmm. It's a proven study that shows if you touch somebody, mm -hmm. they're more likely to make the second basket, even if mm -hmm. they miss the first basket. Ah. So the touch was everything to a point. Wow. Wow. Right? Isn't that crazy? That is wonderful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so what I got also additionally uh, from that section is that God will only lead you as far as your faith will take you. Mm -hmm. He will lead you only mm -hmm. where your faith will take you. And then God isn't asking us to do what we can. He's asking us to trust in him to do through us yes. what we can't. Mm -hmm what we can. So when we trust in him, he will reach out and pick us wherever we are and turn us through and 365 degrees, you know, do whatever he needs to do, whatever and be, whatever he needs to be to right. rescue us. Yeah. To rescue yeah. us. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And I have a of, on that one too. Yes. In yes. Terms of the others, the 12 who were playing it safe. Yes. <laughs> 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 what opportunities mm. we miss out on playing Ooh, in safe space. Yes. I think I can handle instead of trusting the Lord. I know it takes a lot of faith to mm. get out yes. there, but I just wanted to, you know, bring out one thing that Kansas Avenue had an opportunity to do years ago. Mm -hmm. The property that is now has a beautiful apartment complex. There was a time when we were thinking about buying that property and we didn't do it. And look at what <laughs> opportunity we missed out on. Wow. No jobs for everybody. You know, wow. we would have had a place for our, um, our, um, our homeless or for our elderly who needed right by the church. 
But anyway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we play it safe to our own. We, we limit what God can do. What God can yeah. do. By not trusting him to do the impossible. And he's already said, with him, he, we can do it. All yes, things. yes, yes. So no, you're so, right, Marcia. I'm sorry, uh, Fada. Go ahead. But, but you're you're totally right because I I think when we only how how can I say this? You know, for the twelve or the eleven that were left mm -hmm. in the boat, mm -hmm. you know, we only take that step that we can see the end result. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if we can't see where it's going, and we're not sure where the end is, and it doesn't seem really feasible. Then, then no, then we don't. And that's that's in so many parts of our lives, you know, in the family, at yes. work, you know. That's <laughs> true. Food, the that's restaurants true. even, you know. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Yeah. And if we are playing it safe, what is it that we're playing safe? Is it our house, our car, our job, our... Um, uh, the tradition, our friends, our family. We don't. We don't want to step out of the boat, you know, to do it. We don't want to get out of out of comfort zone, you know, to to do something mm -hmm. that is not done before. Just like Peter did, you know, he stepped mm -hmm. out and and walked on the boat. So if you if you want to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to experience it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then Brooks and Babylon, he says, we are not willing to take chances unless we know what the outcome is. Ah. Then it's not fate. No, it's not fate. Ouch. It's not fate. Ouch. <laughs> oh, it's not yeah. fate. <laughs> I, I really want to know what the outcome is. <laughs> uh, but that's why we... said it was because the landfill, because of landfill issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, that's you know, but I'll, I don't know, but it's just a thought that property is that made yeah. made a lot of income. Yes, 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 yes. They, cool. they did it. So let's look at some of the comments here. We have yes. Mara says this happens to us uh, too when we lose sight of Jesus and yes. began to focus on problems surrounding us instead. Right. We have to keep our eyes on oh, Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Sister Amen. Dada, she also said, if I can find it here, um, this is her, her response. I came, I can come out of the boat only if Jesus instructs me to. Okay. Mm. Yes, <laughs> with Jesus, I know I cannot mm. drown. Mm. Awesome, awesome, mm. awesome. Mm. But so, I wonder if sometimes we, we got to step out. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, Peter was saying, if that's you, yeah, he wasn't even sure that was Jesus. Ah. Yeah, if it's you, bid me come. So, yes, we have to believe mm. it's from the Lord. So, yes, yeah, oh, yes, yeah, yes. We but sure we have do. to give. We have to give some credit to Peter, you know, even yeah. though he's an ambitious guy, you know, what like to show off and like if he's presumptuous and all that. Mm -hmm. But he stepped out of, of the boat, you know, like the other disciples did not. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a good example for us. Yeah. To trust Jesus, mm -hmm. to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. I found it interesting that the other 11 did not step out, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I kind of feel like if I were in the boat and I saw Peter now, he's walking. I said, oh, let me come too. I want to come too. <laughs> yeah. I, I would have that foot over. And then uh -huh. I see Peter starting to drown and whoa. Oh, I go back. back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I always wonder what happened in that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Okay, I think Marcia, you have the next session section. Yeah, the next the next part I, I went thing um, is focus. And mm -hmm. many of you have already pointed that out, that it's vitally important that we keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. And um, when we start focusing, and this is where the enemy gets us, when we when we get interested and we really intend, we're going to pray, we're going to watch, we're going to keep our eyes on the Lord. Sure enough, something happens, stuff mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. And we get distracted by the troubles mm -hmm. instead of taking it to the Lord in prayer, leaving it with him, trusting him with those issues. 
So when we start focusing on the billows and the waves of life, we're subject to lose what little faith we might have. Mm -hmm. And sink into despair, anxiety, depression, suicide, worry, more fear. And remember what the scriptures say, men's hearts will fail them for fear of what is coming on the earth. Mm -hmm. And according to the statistics, I'm talking about men's hearts failing them for fear, mm -hmm. um, heart disease, and um, what's the other one? Cancer, those are the number one and number two killers um, as far as mor mortality issues are in, in the United States. Those are the top two causes of death. Mm -hmm. But now they are saying there's so much mental health problems mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the United States alone. One, uh, one out of every five people has a mental health problem. My, my, my. Worldwide, it's one out of eight. So there's more people in this rich country that's supposed to have everything. Wow. Than, than the stats are worse here than it is when we look at the whole world as a whole, because it's one in eight worldwide, but one in five in the United States. But they're saying, they're seeing that, and we know that as the mind thinks, as we, as we think in our hearts and our minds, so is the person. And mm -hmm. the mind, when we're worried, when we're depressed, when we're stressed out, we know mm -hmm. that the chemicals, the chemicals that are released as a result of that, the body takes the hit. Yes. So by the time we see the, the heart problems and, and the cancer, the problem has been something that has been bothering you. Mm -hmm. Mm, and we're not mm. giving all of these issues and concerns to the Lord because he's the one that keeps our hearts and our minds yes. in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And that's a focus on him is vitally important in order for us to maintain peace in this world. Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. that. So um, wow. shout out for keeping your focus on the Lord. Wow. The last point that... Um, I wanted to bring out from, from that is um, based on um, just as Jeanette was saying, the human connection. Immediately, Jesus stretched his hand. My mother in law, mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus with his stretched out hands, he <laughs> picked up Peter. Hmm. Human connection is so important. It kept Peter from drowning. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the issue of human connection, we are his hands, yes. the feet. We're the mouthpiece of the Lord. And he expects us to help one another. He said, help your brother. He said, and so fulfill, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law, the perfect law of Christ. Mm. So when we look at, um, what's happening in the world, uh, we need to be uh, sensitive to the need for human touch mm. there to help one another through the maze of life and all the struggles that are, mm -hmm. that are going on. Mm -hmm. uh, people will see and understand the love of God by that which is demonstrated by those who claim the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're meant to be in community worshiping together, helping one another out. The mm -hmm. social isolation alone um, mm -hmm. was highlighted during COVID-19 has done a job on, wow. on, on all of us mentally. And yes. so, again, the importance of human touch. As mm -hmm. Jesus stretched out his hand, yes. say Peter, less yes. sensitive to the needs of one another and give a helping hand. Awesome, awesome. Wow, I love that that point, you know, human connection. And um, we have plenty of opportunities, you know, when we go around, even in our own family, our neighbors, our church, mm -hmm. our community, wherever we go. Sometimes we tend to focus on our own situations right. and circumstances and ignore the world around us. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it takes doesn't take much, maybe a handshake or a smile or a pat on the back or something yeah. to bring some to, to lift somebody's heart and then encourage them. Yeah. Human connection is very important because we are 
we are not to to live life uh, in an isolated um, setting, mm -hmm. but we are we are social beings, so we need to stay connected. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of times when we see Jesus is going through his ministries, mm -hmm. there's always some kind of a touch. You know, he mm -hmm. connects with people, sits mm -hmm. down with them, allows the children to get on his lap, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing, you know, and there's a reason for it. It just binds you together, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You become closer to one person with that touch. Yes. You know? And it's the same, just like Marcia was saying during COVID, you know, when we couldn't hug each other at church, mm -hmm. that that was for me, that was really quite a challenge. Oh my goodness. It's difficult yeah. because <laughs> you go through the whole week and, and there's no connection yeah. with folks. No connection. So you get there Sabbath morning mm -hmm. and then you greet everybody, handshake, some kind of a touch, a hug, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that just brings joy yeah. to a person's so right away. Your stress yeah. management has started to work. You're feeling relief, your cortisol levels calm down, mm -hmm. you know, and we're entering into worship mode. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus showing that human connection was fantastic. Him oh, getting yes. into the boat, because you can just imagine, for me, I can imagine that, you know, he holds Peter's hand. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that they held hands all the way back to the boat. I wouldn't be letting go. Mm -hmm. know. Oh, that's true. Not that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> so if I wasn't hanging on to him, <laughs> I'm at least holding his hand. Yes. You know, and that must have just made them closer. And then they mm -hmm. get into the boat mm -hmm. and never do we see Jesus chastise the other 11 or right. say, oh my goodness, why didn't Where you guys get out been? of the boat? Where was your faith? <laughs> Yeah. And he's like, come on, guys, let's make it to land. That's let's it. Let's That's go. it. Yeah. That's it. This yeah. is an awesome God. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Very awesome. Yes, that's for sure. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. so, and an encouraging point, too, though, is like after Jesus' death and resurrection, the disciples were in the upper room. They were still hiding out, afraid you know, um, together, but it was after the power of the Holy Spirit that came mm. on them. Mm. They didn't care if you wanted to kill me, I'm gonna get out there and tell the world about Jesus. That's it. And so it's the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength to believe, mm -hmm. to do the impossible, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I pray for, for, for his spirit. Yes, he gives liberally. So he builds our faith. That is awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, looking at the question, <clears throat> would you get out the boat? Why or why not? Mm -hmm. It looks like most people who answered said they would, as long as they're following Jesus. Ah, awesome. there we go. <laughs> that is the key. That song that we used to sing in Sabbath school, Anywhere with Jesus, I Can Safely Go. Yes. 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 We'll keep you following him wherever he goes. Yes. That's yes. What we have to have. <laughs> yes. Oh, we better yeah. have him on our boat because uh, without Jesus, we'll struggle in the storms of life. Right. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's safe in his, wherever he is, we are safe. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's what it is. Wherever Jesus is, that's where mm -hmm. I need to be. Right. The safest that's, place to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly, you know. The safest place to be. Mm -hmm. One yeah. of the the most wonderful things that trips that I've taken in my life has been to actually Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've been to the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Galilee. Yes. You know, it's a huge body of water. When you're yes. in the middle, it really is like a sea, big waves, the, the whole nine, mm -hmm. even though it's actually a lake. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to say is that when you take off on the Tiberias side, you can take off from the Tiberias side, mm -hmm. and then you go across 
the lake and they show you how they used to uh, fish in that time. Mm -hmm. But it is so surreal to be on the Sea of Galilee mm -hmm. in a boat watching this guy fish and then you get to the other side to Bethsaida, you know, down a little further, you're in Capernaum. Yes. And you walk in the, <laughs> the same footsteps of Jesus. So mm -hmm. you can be in the boat. And it rocks, you know, pretty yes. good in the middle. It rocks pretty yes. good. You're like, wow, imagine Jesus right now standing there. <laughs> you want to get out of that boat, you know? <laughs> because wow. in modern times, do I get out of the boat? Oh, you know, oh my goodness that that was some kind of trip boy i would encourage yeah. everybody except for you know maybe not right now don't do that but um oh yeah so those were our points that we had uh learned from peter's um from this chapter they also mentioned that this is the first time that the disciples call Jesus the son of God. Yeah. Before that, they're like, yeah, it looks like it could be. We're thinking that you are. But mm -hmm. after even all the miracles he did before, they were kind of like, yeah, most likely, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. probably right. But when he does this thing, this is the first time that it states that they worship him and call him. The yes. son of God. Yeah, son of that, God. Yes, that cemented that in their heads that they were walking with the son of God. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So our takeaway points then is, um, of course, faith. Taking that first step out of the boat is all mm -hmm. with building your faith, listening yes. to God. Yes. Right, uh, being in connection with him. Um, and of course, recognizing God is from spending time with him, of mm -hmm. course, right? So we take time to, to spend time in prayer mm -hmm. um, so that we can know him by sight and especially by voice. Yes. Never taking our eyes off Jesus. That was Amen. the biggest point, right? We do not take our eyes off of Jesus. You know, the other one is good intentions, right? Peter, mm -hmm. God had a lot of good intentions in getting oh, out, yeah. mm -hmm. but they will only take you so far if you do not have the power of the Holy Spirit with you. That's you right. need that, right? And our last one, um, always looking towards Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We find mm -hmm. that in Hebrews 12, 2, mm -hmm. um, where it, it says that. Let me read that for you. Um, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who yes. for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, mm -hmm. and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, Hebrews 12, 2. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Any other takeaway points, ladies? Yeah, I got um, Hebrews 11, verse 6, where it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that come, he has come to God, must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And uh, the other thing I got is uh, get, God will only lead you as far as your faith will take you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man, that is powerful. That's awesome. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So we want to thank Marcia. Did you have a, a, a part in point for us? No, I, the, the focus on Jesus is, is the key. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord wants us to have great faith. Mm -hmm. The mustard seed faith will grow. Mm -hmm. And as we see the challenges all around us, instead of looking at them in a negative light, he says in everything, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he's building mm -hmm. many of those situations. He's building our faith. Amen. 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 Great putting word. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's pray out. Okay. Um, and thank everyone so much for joining us here uh, today. We really appreciate you taking the time uh, to do this. 
Indeed. So Father God, thank you so much for being with us. Please be with everyone as they uh, go on to their individual sessions and that they will have a good rest of the week. Bless everyone who will also see this later on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.